Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So the other day I was over here working on a project on the milling machine and I had a mess of stuff out on the workbench. I'm always talking about, you know, keeping things organized and, and neat and clean. Um, but, you know, just like you guys, I'm sure, you know, when you're in the middle of a project and you just keep grabbing one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, before you know it, your whole workspace is, you know, filled with stuff and you don't want to stop to put the things away that maybe you don't need because, hey, I might need them again. And one of the things that I had on the bench here was a wrench. Actually, I had a couple wrenches. And I don't remember if it was this one specifically or not, but um, I'm sliding stuff on the bench and this guy got pushed off the back of the bench. Now, I know what you're thinking, big deal, Rich. It's a wrench, it's, it'll be fine, right? Well, let me show you what's around the back of the bench. So behind the bench here is two car batteries. And these are both good car batteries. One of them is out of a project vehicle uh, that I'm working on. Um, and the other one is the battery that I pulled out of my wife's Highlander that I replaced before we went on like a long road trip. And I just wanted to make sure that it had a good fresh battery in it as the battery was, I think, approaching five years old. Um, and I keep both these batteries charged so that they don't go bad. And when I came back here to grab the wrench when I needed it, like 20 minutes later, uh, I found this wrench sitting. I'm afraid to even get too close to it because I, I, I actually had to go get some paper to put in between the wrench and uh, the battery post before I even tried to pick it up. It was as close as you could get to the battery posts without actually touching them. I, I don't know how it managed to fall in that spot. And if you've never shorted out a car battery before, there's a lot of energy in these guys. Um, they, I mean, you can actually weld with a car battery, not weld, but there's that much energy uh, in there. So this is quite dangerous to leave it sitting like this. I, I've never really thought about it before. Um, the one underneath of it, at least this one's sitting on top. So these terminals would be kind of tough to get to. Uh, that's one terminal there. The other one's over there. I mean, I could see something potentially getting in there and touching those terminals too. But this is particularly dangerous the way this sits. I mean, it's behind a bandsaw and a milling machine. So there's plenty of metal stuff that comes down here all the time. This is just stupid. Um, I shouldn't have left it like this. Uh, but this is a good spot for these batteries. So I think what I want to do is make some terminal covers for this battery. Um, what I'm thinking is, you know, we probably do red and black and just something that's a nice tight fit that goes down over these terminals uh, that'll stay on there, even if we pick the battery up and move it around, but that's still easy to get off because I do maintain these batteries. Every couple months, I'll plug them into a charger uh, so that they stay fresh. The worst thing you could do for a lead acid battery is to just leave it sit for years. It's going to go flat. You might recover it. You might not. But these things are not cheap. Um, probably 125 bucks a piece for these batteries to buy them new. So I'd like to keep them working. Um, but safely. So let's uh, let me go see if I can find some specs on these terminals. I took a brief look at them before I started shooting and looks like they're tapered, which makes sense. Um, and I never really noticed this before, but I think they're different sizes too. The positive one sure looks bigger to me than the negative one. So I'm gonna go see if I can find some specs on battery terminals. All right, I dug around a little bit online and I was able to come up with a design diagram for, or informational diagram for the different post sizes and tapers on battery posts. Uh, this same image was linked from like three or four different forum posts I found and a couple different sites as well. I said that because I don't know what the original source of this diagram is. Kind of looks like maybe it came out of a catalog or uh, maybe even part of a sign or something like that. But I believe the type of terminals we're dealing with are the SAE slash GIS. Um, most, if not all, the cars that I have worked on um, come out of Japan, so that would make sense. Although I see there's a GIS pencil post type too. Um, that shape does not look familiar to me. I don't, don't recall seeing that one before. I think most of the batteries that I have touched are probably this one here, but we're going to check. I grabbed the calipers and it looks like it's a one to nine taper. In fact, they're all one to nine tapers. Uh, it's just a different part of that taper. So if you were to take a look, if you take a look at this one, if you were to, if you continued this taper further up, you'd eventually get to this section up here. Uh, let's see. So, ah, yes, and our positive is bigger than the negative, 17.5 millimeters diameter at the top, whereas the negative is 15.9. Looks like they're both the same height. 
and there's like a height. I'm guessing this is probably the mating section of the taper. Yeah, it says 15.9 millimeters minimum, and then I'm guessing the whole post, including the base and the rounded part at the top, can't exceed 18.6. So we should probably design uh, around the mating part because that's the part that we know is going to be the same and maybe just allow a little extra room at the top. And we're going to have to do two different ones. Well, we got to do two different ones anyway because I definitely want to do one in, one in red, one in black. We'll probably put uh, symbols at the top too, a plus and a minus. Uh, but let's check this. Let's see if this battery measures within this range. So positive 17.5 millimeters. This is our positive post. And I'll try to get right at the top before it rounds off. 17.26, I might be a little bit high. Oh yeah, I was. I felt it kind of go past like a bump there. Okay, 17.43. And then the negative one is 15.84, 15.9. Okay, yeah, so this is definitely this terminal type. So we'll work from this diagram uh, doing the design. And it looks like we have plenty of room around these terminals um, for you know, I'm just thinking we're going to want a fairly thick wall here so that if something does fall on top of the battery, that whatever we design actually does still protect the terminal. You know, we wouldn't want to do something really thin. I know when you buy the batteries, I think they have a really thin piece of plastic on them that you rip off uh, that's not reusable. I want to go thicker than that. I want it to be something that's a bit more protective. So let's, uh, let's fire up SketchUp and come up with something. All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. And I struggled a little bit with this. Uh, I use SketchUp Make. Uh, folks ask me in the comments all the time what software I use. And I generally use SketchUp Make because it's the first software that I learned. Um, I think it was the only free option out there at the time that I got started in 3D design for 3D printing. And it's just still kind of how my brain works and getting something that I you know, can visualize in my head uh, into CAD uh, and get it sliced up to print. And I'm usually quicker with it than I am with Fusion 360, even though Fusion 360 would probably be the right tool most of the time. Um, in this instance, even though I really stumbled through Fusion 360, it would have still been a better tool because I had to manually edit the mesh to get all these angles correct on the corners. I think it was a combination of the number of sides that I had in my base uh, you know, circle diameter for the knobs. Uh, and then the number of circles, or sorry, the, the, yeah, the, the number of overall circles that I had at the points in the polygon, and then the number of sides in those circles. The way that the math worked out, uh, some of these lines were very close to the edge, which made smoothing this basically impossible. So I actually had to go and clean up the mesh manually uh, to get this to look the way I wanted, which is total waste of time. Uh, first thing I did was draw out the taper. Uh, that was actually pretty easy. Uh, I first, I know that the taper as defined in that drawing was a, a I think it was a one to nine, check the drawing here. Uh, yeah, one to nine taper. So I know for one unit vertically, uh, I'm going out nine units horizontally, and then I can just measure that angle uh, to figure out the taper angle. Uh, so once I had that, I just, uh, I just drew my, my cylinder and then drew the uh, one angle component on the side and used the follow me command uh, to just wrap that taper all the way around. Obviously, I had to do that twice because the uh, diameter of the positive and the negative is, of course, different. 
Um, and then I, I messed around with a couple different iterations till I was happy with the overall diameter um, versus the, the diameter of the inside taper. I actually ran back downstairs and took a measurement of the, the area around the post on the battery to make sure I'd have clearance on the four batteries that I had here to, uh, to check. And uh, this, this diameter was uh, well within. I think I, I still had, I could have gone another seven millimeters wider um, and not hit anything on at least all the batteries that I have here. So um, these were a bit of a pain to do again. So I'm hoping this, uh, this works on the first try and that the, uh, the taper measurements were correct from that diagram. So uh, I'm gonna go slice this up and let's, uh, let's get them printed. All right, and here we go. I did one of each. Uh, I think they came out pretty nice. Uh, I let it just uh, bridge across the top. I did have to go in there. I, what I'll do is if I, if I have bridging across the top, that's a little bit messy for the first couple of layers. I just take a flathead screwdriver and I just rotate the flathead screwdriver around in there, almost kind of like a chisel, uh, just to break any loose pieces off. Um, let's see how these fit. They definitely look good. Oh, that actually fits, fits really nice. It kind of twists. Let me get you down closer. All right, so I know you guys at home can't feel this, but as I set it down on there and give it a little bit of a twist, it basically, like it kind of locks in place. You see how this guy's not loose at all. Um, and you've got to twist it uh, to get it to unlock. So we're definitely not bottoming out on the bottom here. And I don't think we're bottoming out in the inside, uh, or the top on the inside here either. I think we are basically fully seating on that taper. Let's see if the negative side is just as good. Feels a little bit looser, but I don't think it's bottoming out. I think maybe this terminal is just smoother. Yeah, I've got to push a little bit harder on this one down as I turn it to lock it, but this one locks on there nicely as well, or I should say seats on that taper. Yeah, really happy with that. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go print uh, two more, uh, another, another positive, another negative, and uh, let's see how they fit the other battery. All right, here's our positive terminal. Yeah, that one locks on really nice. Oh, and the negative one, I didn't actually clean this one out yet. Uh, I don't know if we can see in this light here. Yeah, not really so much. Eh, you can kind of see there. You see there's a, just some mess in there where it bridged across the first couple layers and didn't really bond well. Let me grab a flathead, I'll show you what I mean. So you preferably want a flathead screwdriver that's a little bit sharp on the end. This is a fairly new one, so. See how this does. I'll just take it and I just turn it around in there. And it just kind of breaks up all those small pieces. Anything that's loose. You can see all the crap that came out of there. All right, let's see how this one fits. Yeah, that one fits really well. I was worried that if this one was gonna be loose that maybe we were just a little bit off on that taper. Um, I think this one's just loose because that terminal is like really smooth, but this one locks on uh, just as good as uh, the positive side on this battery or the positive side on the other battery. Well guys, I'm really happy with how this came out. If you're interested in the STL for this, uh, the files will be linked on my site, fpfdesigns.com. Just like all of the designs I feature on this channel, I give away the STLs for everything for free. So if you wanna print a set of these for yourself, um, you will find that on the site. I'll link that down in the description as well. You don't have to type that in or uh, remember that. Uh, it's always in the description of my videos here on YouTube. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time on the channel, uh, I do a new video like this every single Friday that is a functional print. Sometimes it's something really simple like uh, battery terminal covers like we did today. Uh, other times it is a much more complex design. Some of them even span multiple weeks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a real big favor, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you really enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button. And if you do, guys, I'll see you back here next Friday.